In this video, I'm going to talk to you about invisible hearing aids and some of the things that they don't do, which you need to be aware of if you're looking at investing in new hearing aids. My name is Matthew Allsop from Harley Street Hearing and Musicians Hearing Services, and I'm all about helping those with hearing loss enjoy the best quality of life with today's technology. So if you're interested in hearing as best as possible, make sure you subscribe to this channel, hit the grey notifications bell, and you'll be updated every time I release a new video. I have no doubt that for years to come, I'll be telling you about the advantages of invisible hearing aids and why they might be right for you. But at the same time, I've made a promise to all of you to give you an unbiased view in terms of the advantages and disadvantages of all hearing aid technology that's out there and to help guide you through the massive confusion that's out there online. So I think it's also important that I tell you what invisible hearing aids don't do so that you're as informed as possible when you're looking into new hearing aid technology. So the main advantage of in-ear hearing aids is discretion. And when I talk about in-ear hearing aids in this video, I'm talking about both Lyric and IIC hearing aids together. In the past, I've done a specific video on the Lyric hearing aids and the advantages of that. So I'll put a link to that in the description of this video. But the main thing is they're both really discreet. So why would you go with a receiver in the canal or a behind the ear hearing aid instead? There are eight things that I'm going to list now that you need to be aware of. Directionality. So for me, this is probably the biggest difference between an in-the-ear hearing aid and a behind-the-ear hearing aid. And this all comes down to size and positioning. So with an in-the-ear hearing aid, you've got room for one microphone. And what that microphone does is it picks up sounds from all directions. But what it doesn't necessarily know is which direction those sounds are coming from. And that's where a behind-the-ear hearing aid kicks in and it really steps up the game. The purpose of those microphones is to determine which sounds are coming from behind and which sounds are coming from in front. And then they make a calculated decision in terms of trying to understand which sounds you do want to hear versus the sounds that you don't want to hear. And this all results in better hearing in background noise. Interconnectivity. Did you know that modern behind the ear hearing aids are in constant communication with one another? And the advantage of that is that it means that they're working as a system rather than working as two individual components like invisible hearing aids do. So the advantage of this is with a behind the ear hearing aid, if one hearing aid makes a decision in terms of how it should process sound, then the other hearing aid will go on a mode which also complements those settings as well. Again, meaning that they're working together and complementing each other. Now, where this is particularly advantageous is when you're in crowds, groups and noisy situations and again will result in better hearing when you're in those more complicated listening situations. Power and longevity. This point is fairly simple but can save you money in the long run. So whilst in-ear hearing aids can cope with a severe hearing loss, they can't cope with as severe a hearing loss as a behind-ear hearing aid. And this can also potentially mean that the hearing aid will not last you as long. The reason being is that with a behind-ear hearing aid, should your hearing get any worse over a period of time, there are physical components that we can change to make the hearing aid more powerful. However, with a custom-made in-ear hearing aid, because everything's enclosed in the casing, if your hearing drops and falls outside of the scope of the hearing aid, the only way to get your hearing better is with a new set of hearing aids. Batteries. So I mentioned the two different options when it comes to invisible hearing aids at the beginning of this video. We've got standard digital in-ear hearing aids of which the batteries will last anything from about three to five days, or we've got the Lyric invisible in-ear hearing aid which will last anything from about two to three months in terms of battery life. However, everything in our lives now is rechargeable and we only really get that option with a receiver in the canal or a behind-the-ear hearing aid. And so for a three-hour charge, you'll get a full 20 plus hours of life out of a set of rechargeable hearing aids. And you don't even need to turn the hearing aids on or turn them off. That happens automatically when you drop them in the charger or when you take them out of the charger. So from a convenience point of view, they're actually second to none. This means that the batteries on your hearing aids aren't going to die at that awkward moment just when you've stepped into a really important meeting with someone. And at the same time, from an environmental point of view, we've not got batteries which are being thrown into landfill. Size. So there are times where invisible hearing aids actually aren't invisible and that really comes down to the shape and size of your ear canals. So if you have incredibly tiny ear canals, the only way for those components to actually fit into your ears is to actually spill out a little bit. And for me, there are times where it's actually more discreet to have a receiver in the canal hearing aid with a very thin wire coming over the top than an ill-fitting invisible hearing aid in a very small ear canal. 
Of course, there are things that your audiologist can do to make it as invisible as possible. So taking a really nice deep impression, but it just doesn't work for everybody. So it is something you need to consider if you've got very tiny ear canals. The occlusion effect. If you really want to get involved with me in this video right now, then take your fingers, stick them in your ears and count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, if your own voice sounded really boxy and boomy, then you're experiencing what we call the occlusion effect. Now, this happens because when you speak, the vibrations of your larynx vibrate throughout your skull, and naturally, those sounds would escape out of your ear canals. However, when you've got your fingers in your ears, or more importantly, when you've got hearing aids in your ears, that means that those sounds can't escape out of your ear canals. And instead, the sound is reabsorbed by your eardrum, and you get that boominess that you just experienced. Now, for a lot of people, this doesn't matter, and it really Really depends on your hearing thresholds and your audiologist will be able to give you a little bit more information as to whether you're likely to be affected by the occlusion effect or not. This is one of the other big reasons why receiver in the canal or open fit hearing aids exist because typically with an age related hearing loss we have very good hearing in the low frequencies and the high frequencies are mainly affected and so the job of the hearing aids is to just fill the gaps. However if you've got poorer hearing in the lower frequencies as well then you're less likely to be affected by the occlusion effect and in the ear hearing aids may be suitable for you. There are things that your audiologist can do to in-the-ear hearing aids if you do have good low frequency hearing, such as putting big vents through the hearing aids or taking incredibly deep impressions. However, with a receiver in the canal hearing aid, the tips are interchangeable, so it's very easy for us to overcome occlusion. Connectivity. Most receiver in the canal hearing aids have Bluetooth built into them nowadays. And I've done an entire video on this already on the advantages of Bluetooth hearing aids, which I'll put a link to the description of this in this video. But to give you a very brief summary, it allows you to make adjustments to the settings on your phone. It allows you to stream phone calls and media such as the radio, podcasts or music directly from your phone to your hearing aids. And this doesn't exist with invisible in the hearing aids, mainly due to the size of them. And so we don't have room for the Bluetooth chip to be built inside. And at the same time, the antennas need to be pointing in a certain direction. And it's not going to allow that communication with your phone and the other hearing aid if those antennas are buried deep within your head. Reliability. Ear canals are incredibly hostile environments. So they're full of wax, dead skin, moisture. And if you've got an electronic component that lives in there for, I don't know, 12 to 14 hours a day, it's a lot for that electronic equipment to be exposed to. And so we do find that in-the-ear hearing aids need to be sent away for repair a lot more often than a behind-the-ear hearing aid. Not only that, but with a behind-the-ear hearing aid, there are components that we can physically change in clinic. So if something goes wrong, we can do in-house repairs. However, more often than not, with an in-the-ear hearing aid, if it breaks down, it needs to be sent away to the manufacturers, which means it can be out of your ear for up to two weeks. The other disadvantage of that is that we can provide you with a like-for-like -like loan replacement of a behind-the-ear hearing aid because it's a generic hearing aid and we keep all the components in stock. However, because the invisible in the canal hearing aids are custom made, we can't provide you with a like-for-like -like loan hearing aid in the meantime. So by no means am I saying that in-ear hearing aids or invisible hearing aids aren't worth trying, but there are a few features out there that you're missing out on by not considering a receiver in the canal or a behind-ear hearing aid. The best thing to do is to have a really detailed conversation with your audiologist and they'll give you a realistic understanding in terms of what you'll be missing by not having a behind-ear hearing aid and whether that suits the lifestyle that you lead. I hope you found this video useful. If you like this kind of content, please hit the like button and I'll make more like this. If you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do so. And if you have any comments, please drop them in the box below. I'll see you in the next video.